for Bristol City back at BS3 on Tuesday night as we welcome Reading uh, to Ashton Gate. And today I'm joined by Bristol City fan Matt. And today we're going to be looking ahead to the Reading game as well as just talking a little bit about what's going on at City at the moment because it really has not been good enough. So firstly, Matt, we've obviously seen a lot of people over social media um, saying it's the players, others saying it's Dean Holden, others saying it's Mark Ashton. What's your take on it all really at the moment? Morning, Ben. Um, yeah, I, I think for me, it's a combination of all three. Um, you know, a, a lot of finger pointing is, is definitely at Mark Ashton. Um, and rightly so for a number of things in terms of the communication. You know, he's been responsible for, for a lot of the recruitment. Um, but but fundamentally, the, the fingers are being pointed at him because he's the man that appointed Dean Holden alongside the chairman, John Lansdowne, and I'm sure the owner, Steve Lansdowne, obviously had to approve it. But I think Mark Ashton seemed to be the 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 main kind of um, instigator of that. And I think all of us, um, and I'm taking nothing away from Dean Holden, I think there's probably not a single person that doesn't want him to succeed um, because he, he comes across as a really, really genuinely nice guy. And I think, you know, we'll talk about yesterday's game, Ben, but I think his interview afterwards showed just how yeah. much it hurt. But nice guys don't always make... You know, good football managers. Um, and I, in, in my lifetime, I've never known, certainly at Bristol City, but I was talking last night on the, the three peeps. I, I can't recall, even within the, the sort of entire football league, a situation where a point in a number two has been successful longer term. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, you know, obviously a, a, the, the buck always stops with the manager. The manager is the one in, or the head coach who, when results don't go, will, you know, will suffer as a result. Um, excuse the pun. Um, and I I genuinely feel the players that we've got, and even that team yesterday, are better than what they're showing at the moment. And that has to come down to coaching and tactics. Um, and that falls squarely at Dean Holden's door, alongside Paul Simpson and Keith Downing. Um, so, you know, I think it's, it's, it's fundamentally them. But you also have to say... Um, and Ben, you've played football yourself. Your your manager will tell you what he wants you to do. And yep. you know how to play football. You know how to kick a ball 10 yards. You know how to take a shot. You don't need your manager to tell you that. Yep. Um, so there's the motivation thing. So like like I said, for me, Ben, it's, it's all three. Yeah, definitely. And we saw late on with Lee Johnson, the same sort of thing, didn't we? We saw his start off well. And yep. yeah, it was a lot longer with Lee Johnson the first, I'd probably say, season maybe. Um, His first full season, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He did well and then, same with Dean Holden, he did well the first mm, three, four months and then just rocketed downhill. And we were saying off air that if this carries on, something could go very wrong. We could be playing League One football as much as it. It's highly doubted, highly doubted, but it is still a I, possibility. Yeah, you're you're saying that, mate. I, like I said, you're off air. I, I actually think it's a real possibility. Um, our, our form of late, and and really, if you take those first few games of the season out of the way, we've not been great yeah. all season, and absolutely, injuries have played a massive part of that. Of course, they have. In a yeah, um, but you know, I, I just think the the football we're playing is just not very good. And we're not, we're just tactically inept. We're not very well organised. And I look at a side like Cardiff City that under Neil Harris were losing games. I think they were 15th or 16th um, and they were starting to get worried. They bring in uh, an experienced manager in Mick McCarthy um, who has immediately gotten back to basics, has set them up stronger and now they're winning games. And they've now gone, I think, 7th. Um, yeah, and I don't know if they're three or six points off of the playoffs, but you know they've gone above us, and it, and it kind of shows again that you know you, you've you've got to know what you're doing, and and nobody can deny Dean Holden isn't experienced, and and to mm. get your first proper managerial role in the championship is really really tough, um, and I'm sorry it it just isn't working, and like I said, I think he's a lovely bloke. I'd love us to win on Tuesday night. Um, it changed the whole mood and confidence. Um, and then we do go on a bit of a run. Um, and then maybe, you know, as more players return, we start to see something different. But um, I'm not seeing any 
everything that Dean promised at the start of the season about front foot, positive attacking football, looking to play the same players, the same formations, you know. Yeah, so obviously what Dean Hogan said in his one of his first interviews was, as you said, he wants to play attacking football, um, do the thing that Lee Johnson didn't do late on with keeping the same players, keeping the formation. And we obviously know that can be a bit of part of injuries as well, but do you think that is one of the main reasons to our downfall, the injuries as well, or is that just not a good excuse, if you get what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. I do. Um, and, and Dean's always very quick to point out, isn't he, that he's, he's he always says, I'm not going to use it as an excuse, but he's always asked the question and then he kind of says, you know, obviously it's had an impact. So in, in some ways, the, the press um, journalist, the is giving him kind of that excuse. But yeah, there's, there is no two ways about it. You know, we've, we've seen a brief cameo of Joe Williams last couple of games, or uh, apart from yesterday, obviously. And he, he showed that he's got some quality. Yeah. So, you know, had we had a Joe Williams fit, had we had a Liam Walsh fit all season, had we had Andy Vyman fit all season, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm his biggest fan, Andy Vyman, but a lot of what we did, the high press and the energy yeah. stemmed from him. So there's there's absolutely no doubt that injuries are part. You've only got to look at the best team in the, the country as as was and probably not at the moment. Man City are, but Liverpool were playing football the last three or four seasons. That there wasn't a team in the league that could touch them. Yeah, they've lost three big big players for them. They're not the same side. They I think they could be as low as seventh or eighth after the weekend's games. Yeah, I think so. They're... You know, injuries play a massive part. Of course they do, but. Um, that doesn't stop you from setting up. You know, we should be um, we should be more resolute than we are. Yes, yesterday was an embarrassment. We were so open and naive, and um, yeah, you know. And the, the the sad thing is, Ben, and and you know, I'm I'm of a certain age now, but I I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. You know, I listen to yours, obviously. There's a few others that I do as well as obviously the one that we do, the Three Peeps. But mm. when you hear fans saying I want I wanted us to get beat eight or nine nil, so a yeah. decision would be made. That's that's hurtful. I never want to see my team get beat eight or nine nil. Yeah, that's em- that's embarrassing. You know I don't want that. And I did say when when Bristol Rovers got beat by Accrington, um, you know be careful because we're not in a great run of form. And admittedly, it was Brentford we were playing next, and it was that one I was referencing. But what are we two weeks later, and, and we've got a similar well a worse hiding because at least they scored. Yeah. We've five losses now from five we haven't won a game in a whole month so far but yeah you said there obviously it's not great at the moment and that's pretty yep. clear and something definitely does need to change and we've got I don't know three four months left of the season and still anything can happen but I think the main time when something is going to change is definitely going to be in the summer in the next few transfer windows but what do you think needs to happen over let's say the next year to get back into pushing playoffs like we were 2017, 18 season. I think that was when we beat United and stuff. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I do think there's, there's major changes needed. Um, I don't think on the football side of things, Mark Ashton is doing his job well enough. Um, he is heavily involved in contracts and signing of players um, there's there's no two ways about it. What he's brought into the club um, from a revenue point of view and some of the other things that have gone on, you know, we, we've got training facilities that are going to be open very shortly that will be right up there with the Premier League sites. Um, but I think they, they really need to look at the whole structure, the whole way that we're set up on the football side of things um, because we're falling massively behind. And when you look at a team like Brentford, who I want to win the league because I think they play some mm-hmm. fabulous football. Yeah. Um, but Brentford have got a real a real plan, and it's become a bit of a cliche now, Ben. You know, you, you, it is something you'll have heard an awful lot. But p- people talk about a side's DNA. Um, we haven't got one. Yeah, we. You know, we, we, don't, we have don't have any style of play. We don't have, from a recruitment point of view, we we were talking about we would recruit young, and um, you know, b- build sort of the. the the team on that basis, as I said, you, you do need one or two experienced heads in there as well. But the signings that we've made of late and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll call it Chris Brunt, 
Chris Martin, yep. Henry Lansbury. Exactly. Um, you know, Chris Martin with, was probably the exception early on, but has struggled the last few months. Um, it's it, it feels like we're signing players who in the past were very good and now we're getting them towards the end of their career and probably paying a lot of money for it. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's a whole, it, it's almost ripping it up and starting again. It's, it's vital we stay in the championship because you don't attract players, you don't attract management, coaching, whatever you want to look at. But I then think that, and I think this is probably before the summer from Dean Holden's point of view, if things don't improve, they have to make a change. Um, but if I was Steve Lansdowne, I would be looking at the model that I've got in place. Um, and that probably includes his, his son as well, John Lansdowne. Um, I'm not saying I'd get rid of John, but I think John needs more of a hands-on involvement from a, a fan's point of view. Um, and I would, you know, I'd be looking to try and get someone in like Eddie Howe, yeah. like Paul Cook maybe, but but um, Eddie Howe, you think more of the line that, you know, he would look at it as a project. Because there's no two ways about it. We are a really attractive proposition. You know, everything yeah. is there infrastructure-wise. Um but, you know, you can't keep on selling your best players like you, you said, Ben, and expect to, to get to the Premiership. Um, unless, if you do, you recruit very, very well, like Brentford. Yeah. So, yeah, Brentford sold Mope, sold um, Watkins. Ollie Watkins, but brought in Ivan Tony, yeah. who is scoring more goals than either of those two did. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, I, I, I think... There will be massive changes in the summer, as you said, but I think there could be changes before that, um, yeah. certainly from from the head coach point of view. But in the summer, I would be looking at everything. If I was Steve Lansdowne, I would it would probably be a, a real um, drains up sort of approach where I'd be looking at my CEO, um, I'd be looking at my medical team, um, but also the the main thing. And, th- and this is what people forget: it's great having a lovely training ground, yeah, fantastic, exactly. great having a lovely stadium, but it's on the pitch where it matters, and we're not doing it on the pitch, are we? Exactly, that was what I was saying. I was funny enough. I was saying it to your fan. I was saying it to um, some other city fans yesterday. It's all well and good having the brilliant players, and I think the last two good seasons we had was probably when we came up from League One and when we beat United. In in those seasons, we had Luke Halen, who's now been sold and is playing weekly in the Premier League. Uh, Joe Bryan also playing in the Premier League, sold. Uh, Brownhill playing in the Premier League. Uh, likes of Flint, Bob, Bobby uh, Reed, Bobby Reed as well, uh, Webster as well. So yep. our Ashton is building these players up so they're worth a lot of money, selling them on, and then he's not really putting it back in to the club. Like, as you said, Darren, a nice stadium is nice to go to every week. A training ground is nice for us to train in, but a nice training ground, a nice stadium isn't going to be getting us to the Premier League, is it? No. No, hundred percent. And and like I said to, to you off air, Ben, you know that there are there are other mitigating circumstances with it. That if you know um, if your your agent and, and agents have got a lot to answer for in the game, but if your agent um, of Adam Webster and you get a Premiership club coming in for you, um, you know, and and you're talking about if if Man United can't hold on to a player like Cristiano Ronaldo back in the day. Um, there are times where money talks and and with the Adam Webster deal in particular, it it was a fantastic deal. Um, I don't think any City fan realistically would have turned that down. Um, Similarly with Joe Bryan, um, Bobby Reid, Aidan Flint, if the press is anything to go by, they said they wanted to move. Um, so again, it, it, it's difficult, but the, the the big thing for me, Ben, and you, you you said it eloquently there, is that you've then got to invest in it. So there's no point selling the likes of Josh Brownhill and not getting in a, a replacement who's going to be, you know, not not necessarily straight away on that level, but we'll get there. And maybe that's where they saw Joe Williams. Um, but, you know, some of the other signings we've made, you know, Chris Brunt, like I said, didn't work at all even before his injury. Um, and I, I worry about the recruitment. I worry in the manner of Dean Holden's appointment and the manner of Simpson and Downing coming in, how much Dean Holden either say in that. Yep. Um, you know, did he know that was going to be what, what the, the sort of situation was? And I also think possibly um, that 
they may have too much influence on it. Dean may have too many messages getting put in his head. Um, you know, sometimes you've just got to stand up and be and be the one who yeah. makes that decision. Um, you know, and you look at someone like Neil Warnock, um, and I'm not saying I'd want Neil Warnock as manager, um, although he knows about getting teams promoted, um, although Middlesbrough have dropped off a little bit, but he's yeah. his own man. And, and that's what a lot of fans talk about, the, the way we're structured, the... the the involvement that Mark Ashton has on the football side of things. And, and I don't believe for a minute, Ben, that he, he is involved in saying which players need to play or anything like that, but he's too involved. Yeah. Um, and I think unless that changes, I don't, I don't see us um, challenging, let alone getting in the premiership. I don't see us challenging. Yeah. And we're nowhere near at the moment. And as you said, if something doesn't change, we won't be for another good five plus years. And- Was- yeah, certainly, certainly a good. You know, if you change things in the summer, then next season it's again you have that situation where it's about building and trying to you know achieve something. Um, it it's it is such a shame because when you look back with the feel good factor and probably Steve Cottrell was it because Lee Johnson was never everybody's favourite. Even when things were going really well with Lee Johnson, there were still a lot of fans who didn't like Lee Johnson as manager. Um, so really, it was the Steve Cottrell era, and you, and you know, I, I look kind of longingly a little bit at Shrewsbury at the moment, and already they get what Steve Cottrell's about. Yeah. Um, and I know he's in in hospital, and, and I'm sure we both you know wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you know, I look at that and think, oh, what I'd love to be able to be a fan again of a club that everyone seems to be going in the right direction, everyone is pulling for the manager, and and we're not at the moment. You know, I, I think there were, I saw a poll yesterday and it was something like 70% wanted a change in the head coach. Yeah. And as you said, they're the thing with the fans. And we said earlier on that there is, if this carries on, and personally, if Dean Holden isn't sacked in the next, let's say, by the end of February, I don't see him being sacked for a good, few months again because that'll be proven Mark Ashton wrong because he appointed him and I don't see him being that big up and just doing the thing for the football club he's doing it for himself really and I don't think if anything does change we will be down there at the end of the season and even if we do stay up this season we'll be down there again next season, even if something does change, because we're going to have the same players and the same players playing week in, week out and not being able to get the result. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's a, a danger that if we pick up some results now, um, and again, for, for me, that's the important thing. I, I actually, um, I'm not going to say I don't, don't, I was going to say I don't care who's in charge as long as we stay up. Yeah. But that's the most important thing for me. Um, you know, I know, I, I, again, we were talking off air, Ben, and you sort of said about, you know, if we did go down, but we were challenging there, you, you just don't ever know. You don't yeah. ever know. When, when you get relegated, you lose, yeah, like you lose players. You, yeah, exactly that. And Sunderland is still struggling to get back. Um, so you never want to get relegated. Um, but I do think... You're, you're absolutely right, Ben. I think if we, we do pick up some results and we do get to, I think actually it'd be more than 50 points needed. Um, but yeah, if exactly. we do get get to that and Dean Holden's still in charge, um, then I do think they would give him to next season. Um, yeah. I don't see him changing it in the summer. So, you know, I do think if over the next run of games, and, and again, you called it that we've got some tough fixtures coming up. If we don't win... A, f- a couple of those games as a minimum, um, then I think um, Mark Ashton, John Lansdowne, Steve Lansdowne aren't doing their job. They are mm-hmm. sleepwalking then into relegation, um, and there'll be a lot of lot of football fans, right, rightly so in in many respects, critical of of Bristol Rovers and and what they've done of of late with first Ben Garner, um, and then Paul Tisdale. And I talk about him only because obviously it's it's local and you've got lots of mates who are Ravers fans and same as me. Yeah. But the one thing I'll say for them, they've looked at it and gone, it's not working. You know, we're, we're losing game after game and quickly. they've changed it. Yeah, absolutely. So, That's you know, I, I, City have never done really, have they? Even when well, Johnson wasn't doing it, he was still there for 
four, four and a half years, I think it yeah. was. The, the thing with it is, Ben, as well, is it, you know, and, and we were, um, myself and Patch were on, were on the, the three peeps when Lee Johnson got sacked yeah, I remember um, that. after that Cardiff, Cardiff game. And we were surprised, although, although the performance wasn't good and we've been on a, a poor run, we were still surprised. I, that's why I was surprised yesterday that they didn't make a decision with Dean Holden because it was on the back of some really poor performances and it was on the back of a hammer in. Um, so I, I do, I think Tuesday night, if we don't put in a decent performance, but more importantly, get a result, um, I don't see how they can stick with Dean Holden. I really don't. Yeah. So just before we do go on and give our predictions for the Reading game on Tuesday night, we've got yeah. three months left in the season and I'm just, I'm just looking at the fixtures now and it, it looks like we'll be down there at the bottom of the seat at the end of the season sorry in the mid table to relegation sort of area and we've got Reading, Barnsley, Borough, Swansea for the rest of February um, then going into March don't get any easier Bournemouth, QPR, Birmingham, Blackburn, Rotherham and then in April where we could easily be down there with the teams trying to stay up we've got Stoke, Coventry who are down there, Forest who are down there, Wednesday who are down there, Wickham who are down there and then ending it off, we've got like to Mill and Brentford. So, where do you see us? Say we stick with Dean Holden. Where do you see us um, at the end of the season after that Brentford game on the May the eighth? Um, if things performances carry on like they have been for the majority of the season, and I'm not talking just the last few weeks, the majority of the season, then I think we will be relying on other teams not winning that mean we don't end up getting relegated. I, I really, you know, I think we're 11 points away from that third place position. Yeah. Um, that is so and, tight. We're still, yeah, we're yeah. Still and we're, we're six points. So and and the, the thing is, you know, you, you get, and it, it's a phrase that gets used, but you get the happy clappers um, who will turn around and go, yeah, but we're only, and I haven't looked actually, Ben, but um, I heard someone say yesterday, we're still only six points off of the sixth yeah. place. I don't but know if that is the case, that. if it's more than that. The performances but won't exactly. give us those six points. Yeah. So you can turn around and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, why are we looking at relegation when we're six points off of that? Yeah, th- those those results, those points soon get eaten up. And um, all the teams up there are winning week yeah. in, week out and exactly. playing well. And Bristol City yeah. losing week in, week out and yeah. playing badly. We, we were talking a few weeks back that playoffs was still a possibility in terms of where we were in the league we've Not got anymore. absolutely no chance no no chance and, and that's what i'm saying that you know I, I would snap your hand off for a mid-table comfortable finish now um because i'm i am really worried about it i really am um because as i say i think the performances have been shocking um culminating in in yesterday's which was just embarrassing um from a watford team that yes they're up there but they've been under a fair bit of pressure um, you know, a lot of talk about the new manager not doing what he needs to be doing, um, and they, and they absolutely up. annihilated us. You know, we we didn't. Um, I think I didn't see. I think the count was something like nine fouls, um, and probably yeah. most of those were from Henry Lansbury. And I think we only um, had one shot in eighty odd minutes. Well, we had the one that went past the post, didn't we? From yeah. um, uh, back in soon, well, I think had no, had no. Yeah, I think, think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. But it was. I mean, it was poor all round. Um, defensively yeah. as I say and and it's it's frustrating because like I said I, I've said and I'm not I'm not a coach or anything like that I'm just a fan who watches the game but it's clear to me Taylor Moore cannot play left of the three and um, so, sorry for interrupting you there but no, not at all. there's been so many things that fans have said on social media and just talking to other fans, you've got obviously you with Jack Hunt, uh, other fans with Jeju, um, <laughs> Taylor Moore. They're just, we can see it dead in the eye by watching it week yeah. in, week out. And then people high up in the club, they can't seem to see it. They can't seem to, they are working on it every single day of the week, bar, I don't know, yeah. one or two days. And they can't seem to see it's not working when the fans see it very quickly week in week out yeah and, and i think that's that's part of being a football fan isn't it we all think that we could man, manage the team and <laughs> yeah you know i've 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 obviously at nowhere near the the level just it's it youth football 
Um, it's difficult. It's difficult when you've got a squad of players. More difficult, I would think, from a young for, with the youngsters because you don't want to upset um, lads that are playing yeah. or young girls that are playing. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, you know, you you saying that about Jack Hunt. I have I have got a problem with Jack Hunt. Um, everybody who listens to me knows it. <laughs> but he's he's an experienced professional. Um, and yes, in yesterday's game, you know, he, he played one pass, and and he wasn't the only player that was playing misplaced passes, but he's experienced, and he played a pass that was just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and and it really really annoys me that. But similarly, yesterday, I thought Jamie Patterson was dreadful, but I don't think he's fully fit. I thought Famara is playing like a player that knows he's now going in the summer, um, yeah. isn't really interested from from that point of view. Yeah, I was um, saying that the other day. I think there, there really wasn't work. anyone, Ben, that yeah. I could have. I picked. Pat said to me last night, "Who's your man of the match?" I said, "I can't pick a man of the match. I, yeah. I couldn't pick a player that I genuinely thought." And I think we gave Han Noah four, um, maybe Antoine, maybe Dave, uh, Dan Bentley. None of them were man of the none, match. None of them. None of them were playing well. And again, l- looking at the fixtures, even when we were winning against teams like Portsmouth and Huddersfield, I think that Huddersfield game is a good example. It was our last win we had. And I think we won 2 1. I think we only had three shots on target yeah. in that game. And Huddersfield had about. Oh, they battered 15. us, didn't they? 20, oh, 23, yeah. 24, I think. Yeah. Eight, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the thing, Ben. It's. it's um, there's again, there's a there's a sort of saying that you'll 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 take play watching rubbish football and winning, and actually I think the game's moved on so much. I, I think fans and probably even more so now when you're at home watching it and um, because of you know I'm fortunate enough that I've got Sky Sports and and BT Sports, so I watch yeah, a lot of football. Um, you know we're watching a lot of football, Ben, and you can see other teams how they're playing and yeah, yeah a lot of teams there is some rubbish out there as well. We're not the only team by any yeah. stretch, but when you see the likes of Brentford playing what they're doing, um, it just makes you think, oh, what are we doing? You know, we, our wage bill must be far more than, than Brentford's. Um, and yet they've got a style of play. They take a player out because he's injured and put a player in. They play exactly the same yeah, way. exactly the same. But with Bristol um, City, um, we did it under Lee Johnson. Now we're doing it under Dean Holden. Yeah. Say, who should we say? Um, I'm just trying to pick a good example. Let's say Vyman. He gets injured, yep. and then yep. we stick in, uh, like Zach Viner, for example. Andy Viner gets injured, a striker playing in yep. the centre mid, and it's obviously not his preferred position. But he, he was doing all right there. He's doing all right there with Patterson, and then we put in a right back or centre back. I don't. He plays it anywhere really. But and you yeah. then you put him in, and then you've got teams like your Norwich, your Norwich, your um, Brentford, who. Say Janssen gets injured for Brentford, there is a centre back already ready who plays pretty much the exact same way as Janssen fits in there and they can go and get another win. Yeah, and that and that's the thing, Ben. And and you know, again it, it I think a big a big mistake was not getting a left back. Um yep. and I and I know that we've got um George oh. Nurse potentially coming back. We've got Cameron Pring, who probably may be out for the season. Um, you've got Jay De Silva. We don't know when Jay's going to be back. So I, I know that there are other options that we've got in the club. Um, and I can understand why they wouldn't then want to go out and sign a, another left back for, you know, a, a fair bit of money. Because you're thinking, well, we've already got players that, that next season, what are we then going to do? But you get someone in on loan. And, and that, that for me, again, with Mark Ashton and Dean Holden, because he will have been involved in it, to not have got a left back in and think... They must have been able to see in training that Adrian Mariapa cannot yeah, play he's there. He's not a left back. They must have. Now, I've been calling for, for Riley Taylor to be playing left side. Um, and I have been. And I thought he did okay he against Sheffield. Well. He played Yesterday, he got Sheffield. fanged out against Saar, but he's, he's very good. But again, Riley's not a left back. He's a left centre back. He's actually a midfielder, really, from growing up. But we've converted him to a left centre back. Play him left centre back then, if that's yeah. the case. And you've got um, Taylor play, Murphy. Play Vince Harper at left wing back if we're going to do that. Um, but it, it was a massive mistake. And yeah, I'll, I'll go back to what I said at the start, Ben. I, I'm I'm really, really fearful because yesterday I saw a team um, bereft of any confidence, um, bereft of any tactical, tactical nous. Um, and in, in the end, it was like 
and again, I, I watched plenty of it when I was a, a youth team um, coach. It was like watching a team that just really weren't sure what they were doing. Um, and when you've got a team that's doing that, unfortunately, and that there is always one team in Hull where it last season, they look like they're not in any danger and all of a sudden they just drop. And I'm really worried that that, that will be us this season unless changes happen. We saw on Twitter, didn't we, last night, the, the comparison between Hull and us this season on the exact same points, the exact same games played. And yeah, as you said, it, I it didn't could see definitely that. be down there. I didn't see that, but yeah, that echoes the point then, doesn't yeah. it? It's, um, it could definitely yeah, be down there in the end of the season. And yeah. I'll, I'll go back to it again. The games we have aren't easy. Like, but I don't think there's any easy game. From, yeah, there is a yeah, lot at the I, moment. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you look at Wickham. Wickham, um, was it Huddersfield they played yesterday? Uh, um, yeah, 2-0 so down, 3-2. 3-2. So, you know, and that's the team bottom of the table. Or, or yeah, I, exactly. I don't know if they still are bottom it's of the table. Just... But, um, yeah, it's... Things have got to change, Ben. And, and Dean, Dean Holden, you know, we talk about buzzword bingo. Um, there's another phrase for it, but you're too young. Um, but buzzword bingo, where he says everything you expect him to say. I expected him to come out and say, we've got to look at ourselves in the mirror. I expected him to come out and say, you know, we've got to look at it. We've got to do something on the pitch. Then do something. Because after the Sheffield exactly. game, he came out and said, you know, our season starts here. Um, you know, we're well up for it. And then the, the very next six game. Now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, but at least Dean Holden is one of those people who are honest and can come out and say, we have not played well today. When like, so Lee Johnson couldn't seem to do that. No. And, and, you know, again, I go back to what I said at the start. I, I really like Dean Holden. as I'm, yeah. I've, I've met him. I've met him a few times. Um, I yeah, met him once. The, the very player, first time I met him, um, and I met him a few months later and he remembered my name, which it always, it sounds a really small thing, but yeah. you know, he must meet lots of people. Um, and he's a really nice guy to talk to. Um, he's obviously had a lot of trials and tribulations through his life, both in his playing career and personally. Um, and as I say, I don't think there's a single city fan that don't think he's a, a really nice guy mm -hmm. and want him to do well. But, on the pitch is where it counts and at the moment it's not happening and, and he knows himself that he he has to be on borrowed time unless things improve um, because as I say we, we can't afford to go down Ben. Yeah so then we've gone through about I don't know it must be half an hour of just talking yeah. about this um, but let's, let's just end it off then do you think City will be able to get back to winning ways on Tuesday or it's going to be same old same old for the next few weeks as well? I, I don't know I don't know what personnel we've got that could come in and change it. Exactly. Um, you know, again I was asked last night what what I, what team would I play on Tuesday, what formation? Um and I don't know, Ben. I re I really don't know. I really I look at it and think um that does playing five make us any stronger at the back? It doesn't seem to. No, um, if anything we can see the more. Yeah. Um I would be certainly looking. Um, I, I mean, what worries me is that Mariapa will start left again, um, and we know that don't work. Yeah, um, it it worries me that Patterson will start again, and again, that's no reflection on Jamie Patterson because I do like him, but he's not he's not fit enough for me at the moment. No, um, so I would be starting Palmer. Yeah, second. yeah, um, like and it worries me up front. You know, Famara wasn't very good. I, you know, I, I, I might change it completely. I might look at just Naki Wells up front on his own with, with Casey as a number would, 10 behind him. I was saying, uh, I can't remember, I think it might have been after the, it was either, but I think it was before the Sheffield United game, about a few hours before. I was saying, I would like to see Jeju out of the team for once because he's done each week and nothing's happening. I would like to see yeah. Semenya and Wells up top with Casey Palmer just behind him. So it's like a three up top, but like yeah. a, so maybe like a four, three, one, two, something like yeah. that. It needs something. I mean, it, it was interesting. I'd like to see Backinson to come back into the squad because yeah. he was playing brilliantly at the start of the season, got dropped. I can't remember. Do you know was it an injury or? I, yeah, I can't COVID. Really remember. He got COVID. Oh he? yeah, he had COVID, um, didn't yeah. he? A few. Yeah. Yeah, a month or two um, back, and then he hasn't got no, I, I, to the squad. I, 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 I like what you're saying there. Um, 
I think it's def- it definitely needs something. I think even with, with Antoine, though, you know, and, and I really like Antoine, but yeah, it's becoming a bit of a standing joke about him scoring in the championship. But it's not even that so much now. It's the fact, like yesterday, he did it a couple of times. He, he And I always used to say it again, coaching-wise, he, he takes the ball back into dangerous areas. He takes it back into where there are players, and he does that quite often. Um, you know, and that that to me again, coaching wise, and they've they've talked about the coaching team that because of COVID and the quick turnaround of games, we can't get out on the grass and we can't work on formations and we can't do X, Y, and Z. Barnsley have got a new manager in. Look at, I mean, I watched them on yeah. highlights Other teams playing a lovely high press, you know, front foot football. They gave Chelsea a real game the other night. Yeah. Um, and you think, well, why, why, You've why can we not do it, that? Yeah, why can we not do that? Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I and mean, if you're yeah. asking me, do I think we'll win Tuesday? Um, no, I don't. I think no. Reading are, are, are better than us. Um, and then I think if we don't, um, I think that a decision has to be made. I don't like the way that the football world works, but I would like to think that they're already sounding out potential options. Um, we expected that with the Lee Johnson, didn't it? And take some- yeah. Was it I know, months? yeah, absolutely. You, you know, we and we can't afford that. We can't afford for. I'm pretty um, sure you said that on the three peeps, wasn't it? After that Lee Johnson one, you were saying we probably have one, and it was like that. Yeah, I thought yeah, I genuinely thought we did. If he lost the game, he would be gone. Yeah, yeah. And but then three months later, we were still. Yeah, I I think um I guess they they were they were fortunate that we weren't in any danger, so they could then take their time. They knew we were going to be in the championship. This I think at the moment they don't know that. Story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, 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 I, I worry a little bit when I read that Mark Hughes's name's been linked with it, um, because although I think he's he's experienced and he's managed at the top, obviously, um, I don't think the football certainly when he was in charge of Stoke and, and um, later on at Stoke as well. That. Yeah, it was rubbish. Um, so yeah, he, he's not a name that excites me. If if it was me. Um, if if Eddie Howe would come, and I think there's still a bit of a risk with Eddie Howe because Bournemouth was in his was in his DNA, using the phrase. But obviously, no, you know, I don't he, know if he would he want a, to come to a team like. Well, City. this is it, and this is exactly it. I mean, you know, when we had Steve Gerrard's name being talked about, you know, no, we'll never know. Yeah. We'll never know whether there was anything in that. Or, um, but you know, fans are going Frank Lampard. You know. Frank Lampard's not going to come to Bristol City. Yes, I know he was at Derby, but he's then gone he's, to Chelsea. Yeah, he, he was would playing against be getting a... Barcelona. He was playing, and exactly. now he, then now he's next season he'd if he comes in, he could be playing job. against Shrewsbury Town. Yeah, he'd Nothing expect a Premiership. Shrewsbury. Yeah, he'd expect a Premiership job. So, for me, you know, I would I would absolutely be going out to try and get Eddie Howe, um, and if not Eddie Howe, then I would be going for Paul Cook um, mm. from Wigan. It was. Yeah, Wigan, um, yeah. Because I really like I like his passion and I like the football that his teams play, um, but I would absolutely be doing those discussions now, just to sort of see is is there an interest there? Certainly within I think Paul Cook would would walk from um, wherever he lives now. I don't know if he's up in the Merseyside or not, but I think he would walk to take the job because I think he knows how, what a job it is. But I also think he would want to be well. his own man. Yeah, I think he'd want to be his own man. Um, and I think that's, and that's what... the worry. I think that's what a lot of managers. I think Lee Johnson, he was trying to be in charge of the squad a bit too much uh, later on in his career. And now, as you said, um, Paul Cook, he'll want to be his own man. But yeah. with what we've got at the moment, Ashton, and maybe even behind the scenes, you've got one of the lands down as well. But yeah, I, I don't think we'll we, know really what's going on at the moment. You know, you, you you have to look at the model at Bristol Rugby. Pat Pat Lamb yeah, is everything is, at Bristol Rugby. And um, we've got apparently we've got one of the, one of the best players in the world. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, and Bristol it's, it's, City can go out and get a good match because I, I remember yeah. when Dean Holden was appointed, we didn't get. I think it was Chris Hutton because we couldn't pay his wages. Yeah. Well, I, the rugby yeah, I've, can go and get out one I've, of the best players in the world. I've heard with Chris Hewton it was more that his his interview wasn't particularly good, um, and that, that was the surprise. But you know, Chris, Chris Hewton, Forest have struggled this season. There's no doubt about it. But if Forest stay up, I guarantee you that they'll be playing for the playoffs next season because he, he knows he knows what he's doing. He'll have the summer to do what he wants to do recruitment wise. 
Um, and we don't know, we don't know the impact of COVID, well, we do know the impact of COVID finance wise and on contracts and all of that. It will be very, very different in the summer. And if um, somehow we do go down, that is because I can't think about it, Ben. No, I can't think about it, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we'll end off here then. We've okay, my friend. T- talked a lot about what's going wrong at City, and it's it's been it's, it's been good a to bit, talk, Ben. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it's good to get get off a rant about the exactly Bristol City. But yeah, th- thank you all yeah. for watching. My pleasure, um, mate. Hopefully, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, Matt. And hopefully, something does change very soon. Don't know what it is, and maybe get you on again in a few weeks' time to if something does change or. Even if it's yep. got worse. Whenever you need me, Ben, I'll be there for you, buddy. Not a problem. Legend. So, yeah, thank you guys right, for mate. watching, and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Come on, you Reds.